Thanks Hi, for everybody. Our new back in there. If you can't hear us, let us know. And one day I hope to not start these broadcasts that way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for technology, joining us. Technology, technology. Yeah, right. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it's not as great. Ah, but thanks for joining us again tonight. We have got onions on the menu just all the way across the board, and we're pretty excited mm -hmm. about it. Yes. Like it sounds good. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks for, for being here, guys. Thanks for the Thank feedback. Um, but yes, we've got our onion recipe that we'll send out a little bit later. And mm -hmm. as we mentioned in that first email, we're doing some onion tarts. We'll do a quick pickled red onion. And then we're just going to talk about onions and their variety to them and their different health properties in general while we wait for those things to kind of come together. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. All right. Well, I can go ahead and get started because um, we're going to start by caramelizing some onions that we're going to use. And um, so obviously, we're probably not going to make like a traditional tart since traditionally tarts are made in like very um, butter and fat heavy uh, crusts. But we do have some like flatbread. So we're going to gonna kind of going to make it like a little take on a tart, but and a little flatbread. And we're going to like smother it in caramelized onions. And then we're gonna serve it, uh, pop it in the oven really quick with some cheese, just like light little smatterings of cheese and then actually top it with like a nice arugula salad. So it'll be a much more um, plant forward version of like a pizza almost or a flatbread, but um, that's where we're going with that. Um, and then we'll actually, I went ahead and roasted some of this stuff off earlier and we'll turn that into kind of like a little base smear that we can do along with our onions. So, and then Stephanie's going to walk us through quick pickled red onions. Yeah, so we've got a couple of different things that you can do, kind of just what we've got created tonight, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. um, and so more or less, it's just using that produce while it's in season. I know last year, I think that first time I went out to the garden was probably the middle of July and the onions, like they were the red onions and they were just beautiful. And I went home and I was eating one of them. I put it on top of the salad and it was probably the best red onion I'd ever had because it was just fresh. It was straight out of the garden, kind of right to my front door in about 15 minutes. And it was fantastic. And so we're really excited to um, kind of share those ideas with you as they come up. We always, you know, as always, wish that the garden was still available this season and that we could see you all in person. But we're really excited about the ideas we've got and kind of the different twists and turns that we're taking on, like Katie mentioned. So a little non-traditional, but still flavor forward. Yes. Yeah. We'll go ahead and start panning the camera now. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start breaking down our onions. So we've got a few different onions that we can take a look at. This is just your traditional green onion, or um, there also would look similar, um, but a little bit different spring onion. Um, so nutritionally, these are a little bit more nutrient dense just because they're smaller and more compact. You're getting all of your nutrients then in these green portions of the leaves in a little higher quantities than like a bulb onion. So this, the green part, you actually would have a green onion um, stem that's coming out of it, as you saw like on the picture um, of what the, like our class uh, picture front. So out of that red onion, you saw those nice tall green stalks and we do lose some of the nutrients from those green stalks when we just take the bulb off. But the good thing about that is that we can store these, you know, indefinitely really if you store yeah. them properly they last for quite a long time yeah and like katie said they sell there really well which is great for the winter time if you do have a lot of onions right now and maybe your home garden mm -hmm. um you go ahead and just kind of clip the tops off of them and keep them in a cool dry place and you're covered for a really long time mm -hmm. um and just you know give them a good smell kind of see if the outer let's say the layers the outer skin layers on them are still looking all right and you can just go from there yeah, you just have, um, I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures of like the curing racks or if you've done that very much, but you just kind of like let them cure for a while. Yeah. Then um, there are even some people who specialize in like braiding like garlic and onion so that you can like hang them, yeah. which is really cool. I've always kind of wanted to learn that, but I don't really have enough of a plot to like move forward with that. But um, so what we have after the green onions, we've got some cipollini onions, which are what I roasted off. And these are just smaller little petite versions of onions. So again, if they had their green parts to them, they would be a little bit more nutrient dense, but they are sweet and just a really nice kind of, there's like pearl onions and different varieties of these smaller little petite onions, which are really great with like roasts or um, 
what did you say that you ate it with the other day? Um, like roasted potatoes, yeah, yeah, and like a steak or some chicken or something that you would essentially just toss it all in the oven and let everything caramelize. They mm -hmm. go really nicely with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then these are sweet onions, but they also look really similar to Spanish onions. Um, so there is a difference. Um, the flesh of this onion is going to be pretty sweet. And the um, Spanish onions are kind of similar, I personally think, to like just a traditional white onion, but they have the more brown outside. And then we also have our red onions, which are featured a little bit more in like Asian foods or they're eaten a little bit more raw just due to their um, flavor profile. So um, you can still cook and do all the same things with the red onions that you would the other onions, but you are gonna have that like color factor that's involved. So mm -hmm. like if you caramelized a red onion, it's not gonna look the same. It's not gonna look that caramely mm -hmm. color that we're used to getting because of the color that are that's in the onion, but you do get different antioxidant properties yes. from it. The anthocyanins that you get um, are what you see in the red pigment. So I'll go ahead and get started. We're just gonna chop it in half and i know some people don't really like chopping onions and i was just reading up about how the um i'm not even going to try to pronounce what it is that makes you cry but i didn't even know that there was a onion american onion association but apparently there is and they recommend that you cut it in half and peel the onion but you leave the root intact because that's where the chemical compounds that make you tear up are the most um, prevalent or... Yeah, they're really concentrated there concentrated. is what I said. Yeah, that's when we were the reading word. through it. Yes. And so kind of that other side, the part that's in the dirt with the root side. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, what you'll see is when the chef Katie starts to chop everything, it helps to keep it intact anyway. Yes. <laughs> Do a little more control with your knife skills. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and brush this stuff off to the side. At home, I would just take that and then take these ends off and then I'll stick them in a bag and put them in my freezer. And then I do that with like the ends of that and celery and then um, any carrot bits too. And that's what I make stock out of once I, that bag gets full of stuff. Um, and then I go ahead and just run my knife. I try to be as thin as possible as I'm slicing down the side of these onions. As always, kind of keep your fingers curled so they don't get in the way. And especially with onions, um, since they're round, they can kind of flop around real easily. Anybody have any questions or anything about onions? Okay, any comments or fun antidotes? We're open to hear them. Traditional <laughs> recipes and things that you like to have onions with? You no, know, I think kind of my favorite across the board is every time I cook with onions, literally anywhere, whether I'm at my parents' kitchen, in the instructional kitchen, um, in my own kitchen, I'm having guests over. If you're cooking onions and you maybe toss some garlic in there, when you people walk them. in, yeah, they love that smell. And so it is probably one of the most, um, I'd say, delightful but kind of pungent smells of things that you can cook. Candace said French onion soup. Yes, that one's a good one. We chatted about making it tonight. And we thought we've got you guys for a good chunk of the year um, with the garden this year since we were able to go virtual. So that might pop up again in the fall, Candace. Yeah. Let us know if you've got any suggestions. All right, so we're gonna put our oil in the pan and a little bit of butter. And personally, I just like the combination of the two flavors. I think that the butter kind of helps with the um, caramelization a little bit better, helps them cook down and just gives it a real like umami flavor. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna let that heat up. Um, so with cipollini onions, I'll go ahead and I've got some kind of broken down here in my little foil pack. While that's heating up, we'll get this going in the oven. And so we've got these kind of already peeled and in here roasting, but you can kind of just either take your knife to it like you would a garlic clove and just like hit it to kind of bust up the little membrane on the outside. It's very similar to garlic when you're breaking it down. And, and so... Yeah, as Katie's kind of breaking it apart right there. So you can do it beforehand. That's typically how um, she or I would do it. If you just roast them all together, that skin will still peel off of it. It won't have kind of the same I guess, say, level of being cooked through and caramelization on the outside of the white. Mm -hmm. But you can go ahead and peel it off. And if you've got some time, you can go ahead and pop those back in the oven once the peel is off and keep roasting them. Looks like we got another question. Hi, everyone. So good to be able to write again. Oh. Holy? Well, hello. Is it okay to refrigerate onions? 
I'm gonna field it. So with that one, I would say you can do it. It helps them last a little bit longer, but it's probably the best if you just leave them out, out on the counter um, and kind of let them hold that way. So I'd say if you've chopped it, kind of like we're doing right now, where you've got, let's see, I'm gonna pull this one right over. Hope you all can see it. Like this red onion that it's in its little container, that came out of the refrigerator. But if it were this whole onion where we're at, the best thing to do is just leave it whole and leave it out on the counter. So it kind of changes the, um, I think the chemical properties of the inside of those onions. All right, so we've gone ahead and just put our, we've broken down our Cipollini onions. We put a, a nice, healthy um, smattering of garlic in there. These are all from the same family, so they're all gonna complement each other really well. We've got some thyme, a little salt and pepper and oil, and then we're just going to kind of make a little oven pack here. We'll roll it over and then roll over each side. And then we're just gonna roast that at a high temperature for uh, as long as we want to until it gets nice and caramely. And then we're gonna puree it. Perfect. Great. Right, so I'm just gonna start to smell that butter and oil working yeah. together. And we're about ready to go. Toss our onions in our pan there. You can kind of see it tosses around. So you can kind of see how they already look a little caramelized just from that brown butter in the oil. And that's more or less the color that you're going for once you get that oil and butter up. You don't want it to get overdone, but you also don't want it to be like just slightly warmed up. And then we're just gonna put a little salt and a little pepper on there. And then we're gonna put it back over on the stove and we're gonna reduce the heat down to a medium low or closer to the low heat. You can always adjust it later, but it's better to start lower and adjust up than it is higher and have to adjust down because you burnt the bottom. Mm -hmm. Um, and so with those onions also, Katie, I have that little bit of salt at the beginning. And so with that one, it helps bring out just the water from the onions. It's going to help them caramelize a little bit faster and make them a little bit sweeter. And so you can go ahead and just toss a little bit of that in there at the beginning. And then kind of later on, once you get that sweetness out of it, if you think it needs a little more, you can add a little more or you're pretty much good to go from there. We will um, send out the recipes. Did we send one out earlier or are we going to send all We did not. We're going to send them all out together with this one here. Right, perfect. And so, yeah, so we'll send those out um, hopefully shortly after the presentation. We'll grab all your emails and forward them along to you. Right, so I'm just going to strip off this roasted thyme and just kind of rub it off of here into these onions and garlic. And then we're going to pop them in the blender real quick and just kind of make a quick sauce with it that we'll use. And then Steph will come over and do caramelized onions with you and, or not caramelized onions, pickled onions. And we'll let the onions continue to caramelize. All right. Our blender over here. And then we're gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more oil to it. Um, and this is our olive oil, so it is a heart healthy oil. And remember, I know we typically think like, oh, that's not heart healthy, but it's going to make a spread that you're just going to use a little bit mm -hmm. up. So you're not going to be sitting down and just eating all of this <laughs> yeah. setting. A little bit goes a long way with that. Like Katie said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So this is nice and broken down and you can see the onions have made this really delicious creamy um, spread that we're going to end up spreading on our little tart thing here. So we'll just leave that off to the side and it smells really good. Mm -hmm. And then Steph can go ahead and do pickled onions with you. Yeah, I'm going to sneak right on in here. If y'all have any questions about anything, keep them coming our way. Let's see. So we're going to grab, I'm going to use uh, the rest of this onion that we did take out of the refrigerator. And I guess that was my take on onions. Do you ever refrigerate yours, Katie? Uh, you know, I don't, like, as a whole, we pretty much keep um, them separate. Though we do have a problem in our house of combining our um, potatoes and our onions, which is ah, typically a big okay. no-no. Yeah, because it... <laughs> Like the gases from, isn't it from the onion brought the potatoes? It is, yeah. So, they kind of combine with each other, like the ethylene gas. Yeah. <laughs> they ripen everything. Yeah. So, they probably 
And when you use them together, though, it's nice to have them right near each other. I yes, say. exactly. So we kind of have like this one produce area where we store our most of our stuff that's shelf stable. So I have to remember to like switch them up or like keep the potatoes in a separate area because if I just come home I'll just dump them all in that produce yeah. thing and then mm -hmm. I won't think about it until I'm like oh hey I have made that mistake before <laughs> myself and then you get in there it's a great way like if you are trying to ripen some bananas a little more quickly or <laughs> yeah. know, an avocado or something that you don't want to wait on is to stick all that produce together um, but right here we've just got this red onion and so I went ahead and just ran my knife through that extra red onion that we had and then I'm just gonna chop this the same way that Katie did a minute ago. And so again, just working with those flat surfaces and you can see kind of like we talked about before, it's got that beautiful kind of purple color to it. And so that's from the anthocyanins um, that pick up your different nutritional density from the onions. And so with the red onions, they tend to be a little more and say acidic when you bite into them, which makes them really great for salads if you're a big fan. If it's a little bit too, um, kind of harsh for you yeah a little bit bitey to it or maybe you've got kids or grandkids that aren't huge on it you can run some water over it after you've sliced it just in a colander to kind of cool it off and take away some of that sting but these compounds are really great for like cancer prevention and kind of lowering certain risks of diseases when we were reading up on onions and all the allium earlier they've got a lot of studies so tons of studies that kind of show how it helps reduce risk for cardiovascular diseases and so a lot of it um, as you can see, we've got a variety of onions and those allium just vegetables in general. And it's having that variety over a long period of time that helps reduce that risk and mm -hmm. it keeps you very healthy. And so as we always kind of mentioned, it's important to eat a variety of things and you're not just going for those same 20 things and the same produce every time you go to the grocery store. Yeah. But right here, we went ahead and just sliced those red onions as thinly as possible. So you can see how they've come on out. We're gonna go ahead and just put them in this glass canning jar here. And you would be welcome to use like a glass Tupperware if you wanted, any canning jar that you might have. But it's kind of important to use the glass ones while it's still warm because you don't want the plastic ones like this to step on in. Yes. Um, but once you've got it all either settled in a in a glass jar and even like a, well, a stainless steel, you'd want to avoid too because the compounds do it. So yeah. mostly glass there. Yeah. You would shove these in as much as you can. And then once they cool, the star that we've also, or the um, container here that we've kept them in, you can go ahead and add it in that because it seals really well. Mm -hmm. And that could just sit in your refrigerator for quite some time once you've got these guys pickled. And so onions really are, they are a great, um, it's a sellable dish and just seller item to it. Let's see, but you all have a preference of like onions over garlic or these green onions, anything that we've used today so far that you haven't seen before or have some questions on how you would use it? Yeah. Send them our way. For sure. We love the interaction piece, so. We do. We miss you all. Or if you know something that maybe we haven't said about onions, but you would like to share with everyone, please yeah, let us know. Join in. And so right here, I'm going to go ahead and we'll kind of load up the pan and we'll come and visit Katie's onions and uh, see this pickling liquid as it gets started. But next we're going to jump in about a cup of apple cider vinegar. And so the apple cider vinegar adds a little bit of sweetness as well as that astringency to this onion dish or to this pickle. I'm going to do that with about a tablespoon or two teaspoons of honey. And it depends on the level of sweetness that you like. This one is about two teaspoons, so I don't want it to be overly sweet. I like that bite that you get. <laughs> We're going to toss in a little bit of salt and then just go ahead and let all of this kind of melt and come together over on the stove. So I'll move on over this way. Let me follow. There we go. Oh yeah, that there we good. go. We'll line them up back to back here. But we're just gonna let that sit and kind of let everything um, blend together. And then I think you get a good close up on the onions there. Yeah. And kind of see how those are starting to caramelize along. So yeah, you can see this uh, starting to get a little light brown in color. And then um, what you're gonna see different ways, there are different ways you can kind of achieve that carameliness. You can just do low and slow all around. And so Steph and I were just talking about this earlier, mm -hmm. like debating on whether or not you keep it on a super low heat the whole time. And um, that's kind of what we're taught in culinary school. You keep it low, do it slow. It should take you a while. Mm -hmm. And then there's another method where you can kind of keep it on medium heat. And then as it kind of, you get your hot spots that have that caramelization on the bottom of the pan. And then as you do that, 
you can kind of hit it. We've got a hot water tap here, so I'm just going to hit it with a touch of water. But um, you just have your water nearby. And just like if you deglaze a pan, that's just going to deglaze that um, hot spot that maybe had that natural caramelization. And then that'll kind of blanket coat your other onions and you get a little quicker onion um, caramelization. And then there's also the cheat method, mm -hmm. which you can add like some balsamic and like brown sugar to it. And that'll caramelize. Yeah, kind of increases that umami flavor to yes. it with the vinegars. And it helps just get you there a little bit quicker if you are in a hurry and you really enjoy that deep caramelization to it. Yeah. Yeah, if you've got all day, then you're welcome to let those sit for hours and hours on the stovetop and see what else works out best for you. All right. I'll trade your sauce. You can talk I'll them through what else you're adding. All righty. And so with this brine, you kind of just want everything to melt and blend together, which it does really quickly. So the honey's already down in there. The salt's already mixed to it. And all I'm going to do is pull it right off the burner. And so that didn't take very long, um, as you all can kind of see there. And then the next thing that we're going to do is just jump in some of these little black peppercorns and follow that by some garlic. And so in the recipe that we're going to send out to y'all later, it calls for one clove. It's because these are for Katie and I, I went ahead and tossed in two extra little cloves. <laughs> so you can do that <laughs> as you like. We'll pull that off the heat because the warm will still go ahead and kind of open up all the oils from those peppercorns and from the garlic. And you can also and smash your garlic stir. ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And you just give it a quick smash like you do with the cipollini onions and that'll kind of release those a little earlier when you yeah, put them in there. Those oils. And then next we're just going to move on back this way. Yeah, come on around come over. Come around the long way. Set her back down. And we're going to take this brine and then just really gently kind of pour it over the top of these onions here. So we've already got them in the jar. I'll let that go right on over about out and so i'm going to make sure again because we love that garlic <laughs> that all three of those cloves got in there and just we'll let that sit and so the onions right now the red onions are still rather stiff they've got a lot of their fibers in them as they will start to um kind of settle into this jar here they're going to be easier to push on down and so right now all we're going to do is you can leave it out on the counter for a couple minutes to let it cool you could stick it in the refrigerator right now because it's a warm brine, but it's not so hot that this glass is gonna break. But we're just gonna let that settle for about 20 minutes or so. Um, and once we come back after the pizza's done and we kind of mm -hmm. talk through the onions, we'll go ahead and show you as we pull that color out of there, how quick these onions really pickle on up. We're just gonna set them off to the side for a little bit and revisit them in a minute. Perfect. All right, so we'll get around to our little tart here. So I'll just use that special. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna that too. Um, Got all the flavor on it. Lovely. <laughs> All right, so back to our little puree with our onions. We're going to go ahead and just smear that on our base here. And this also would be really great. Um, and I, I put that in the recipe for the caramelized onions. Um, this would be really great as like a pasta sauce even, just to like coat mm -hmm. your pasta lightly in this and a little, um, you can use some of the pasta water to kind of like smear that out with the starchiness of that water. It'll kind of turn it more into a sauce. Yeah, it makes it really nice and creamy. So that's a great way to make almost an Alfredo out of it, but yes. using way less of that cream and cheese. And so it makes it a lot more uh, heart healthy in those aspects. All right, and then these are caramelized onions from before. So we're just going to go and essentially put a huge healthy dose of these on there. And I, much like our garlic um, opinions, I like a decent amount of onions. And I mean, these are Me really too. great to just kind of smear on anything. And with those caramelization to it, it's really just all that sweetness. And you don't have the acidity or the, um, the kickback that you would get when those onions were fresh if you stuck it on there. There we go. Which makes it very palatable, very friendly. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people, they'll say, you know, oh, I don't like raw onions, but I'll do, I do like cooked onions or I do like caramelized onions. So it kind of just brings out, I think, the best of those flavors. And so that just makes things a little bit more enjoyable. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of mozzarella on one side and then we'll do some goat cheese on the other and kind of... That way, um, our our mozzarella side will kind of be reminiscent of a French onion soup yeah. and a tart, and then the other will be just kind of a little bit more fresh. Um, a little lighter with the goat cheese. Yeah, it'll get that little tang. 
And so these we just got at the store pre-packed like this. They're tiny little mozzarella pieces, but you could easily get like a block and chop it into cubes. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really want cheese to be the show here. We want it to accent the other flavors. And then um, we will go in with our salad to top it. And what's nice about these little pearls is they're kind of pre-portioned for you. So you can kind of see the bag that they're in there. They're all just settled right on the top. And so you don't have to worry about measuring out an ounce or measuring out you know, how much that would be. You can kind of just pick them out as they go. And then we really like this herb garlic goat cheese. So went ahead and got that for us to try out on here. And these um, Italian herbs are just going to be really great with all of these flavors. And we just kind of crumble it on there. Again, just like with the mozzarella, we don't really want this to be the show. We kind of just want it to accent everything that we're doing. Right, kind of that cheese to settle and pull everything together. Yeah, and then it'll also, the cheese will also act as like a binder when we do put that lettuce on there. It'll kind of help hold that onto the base mm -hmm. of our pizza a little bit better. And then you're gonna wanna cook this in a really hot oven. I would say probably 475 mm -hmm. um, or we're only gonna do like five minutes because we're just looking to really um, melt that cheese down and just finish up the edges of this crust. And you just kind of want to get it all almost warmed through more or less, um, for lack of a better way to put it. It's just warm enough, but it'll all kind of hit those different marks there. Yeah. <laughs> Lock <there. laughs> warm down. Luckily we have plenty more. Yeah. Keep them stored up. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, let us know as we kind of go along. We'll keep talking about just the different onions and the different properties and everything that they've got. I'm going to come on back and kind of grab these red onions we've been pickling. You can start to see how they've softened just a little. And so as I started to soften up there, I'm going to go ahead and just take this tablespoon and press them down a little bit more. And so because they've gotten that much softer, they're already settling into that brine. A couple more minutes, they'll have that nice kind of purple color leaking through. And that's when they turn really bright pink. When the color comes out of the pickled onions into the brine, do you lose the anthocyanins? Um, Great question. Yeah, so with that one, you would use a little bit of it because of um, it just leaking out, which is the same thing that happens if you were to roast them or if you were to cook them. And so it's also why it's important to eat a variety of styles of your vegetables, where if you're able to eat it raw, you kind of get that full use out of it. If you cooked it, roasted it, stuck it in the pan, and I cook it down that way, you would always lose a little bit. But on the whole, it's better to have a little bit of it than none at all. So it kind of evens back out. But yeah, great question, Brian. And you're also going to be losing some of it into the brine. So you're not really mm -hmm. losing it, losing it. Um, but you can use that brine in vinaigrettes and things mm -hmm. like that too. So you're fully utilizing the um, the things that you're making. So like you would use your vinegar in your like vinaigrette, say, for the little salad that yeah. we're topping. You could easily just save that when you're done with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then use that to make vinaigrettes with it. And you've got a nice red onion yeah. cider vinaigrette or cider vinegar mm -hmm. that you wouldn't lose. You'd get your yeah, nutrients you're back from that. Um, and so, and even with that one, kind of using it all the way through, like Katie mentioned, it's great because you don't have a whole lot of salt in that brine either. Versus mm -hmm. if you were to buy like pickles at the store or pickled red onions from the grocery store, it's right. a lot less on the sodium. Um, and so that way it keeps it a little bit healthier and heart healthy in that aspect also. Yeah. All right, so we'll go ahead and just dress our little salad that's gonna go on top of our thing. We've got just some nice arugula in here. Um, we're just gonna do a little bit of oil. And then you wanna do balsamic or do you wanna do another banger? What would you like? Uh, let's do the we'll balsamic. Do we'll give that or... one a go. Or do we have some? We do have some champagne vinegar over here. Yeah, that one's really nice because it helps us. Uh, stick with the light umaminess of the onions, helps them shine. Yes. So I didn't want to overdo it with the balsamic. All right, so we'll do a touch of our um, champagne vinegar. And then we did a little touch of oil, salt, and pepper. And that's really where we're going to leave it for this because it's going to go on top. And like we've talked about before, we just want it to accompany the flavors that we already have on there. And it's already full of those um, garlic and onions. And yeah, it's going to be real simple. You could also just squeeze a lemon on there. Some lemon juice with a little oil, salt, and pepper would be great. And um, you could put 
if you have a little bit more of this, you could put a little yeah. something of that in there for creaminess, added flavor on top. Um, a little hummus would like make it almost creamy. We've done that before. Almost like a Caesar creaminess to it with you get out of the hummus because of the, um, just kind of the roughness of the chickpeas, but it's much lighter, much more, again, kind of heart healthy and plant based across the board and getting mm -hmm. all the cheese and cream in there. All right. So that's good. You can kind of see it's a little, little wilty, but not super wilty. Let's put that off and see. Kind of enough to just settle and absorb everything on it. Give it a minute longer. I think y'all got a small peek of the pizza while it was in there. So you'd see those mozzarella pearls are starting to just kind of expand and um, if they lose their shape to and lose that structure, it makes it really nice and loose. So you can see these are starting to get nice and caramely. They're not quite as dark as these ones. So you can kind of see the spectrum. Some people like them lighter because they like to keep a little bit more of that oniony bite to them. And that's totally fine. You can continue to cook them until they're really, really, um, really caramely. And then really it's just up to your preference how you like to eat them. So um, I like all of the spectrum, <laughs> but Katie and I mentioned earlier when we were going back and forth on it. If you went ahead and Googled like onion caramelization, you would probably find 10 different articles and many different opinions <laughs> from all of the big magazines, kind of the big um, food, players, I would say, everyone's mm -hmm. got a comment on it. And so there's really no wrong way to do it, but some people definitely think their way is more correct, right? <laughs> but Katie and I, yeah, we're just kind of happy to, to, to have what it. we have, yeah, <laughs> just to eat it, to get to that eating part and we're set from there. We like food. <laughs> yeah, not going to complain. Works out well kind of with that balance, as we mentioned before, to eat it across the board, <laughs> whatever you've got to it. Um, with these green onions, like Katie mentioned, also there's a lot more of that nutrient in the top to them. Um, and so a lot of that is just eating kind of your colors and eating that variety of the spectrum. And so oftentimes when you do see oh, patients more clinically, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll go ahead and kind of run that through and see what you would do with it. Um, but when we go ahead and see patients clinically, we'll often get that question of, well, what is white? What do you eat that's white? And for the most part, people think potatoes. And potatoes are great. They've got a lot of nutrients to them, um, high in potassium. They're really awesome as like a filling dish. But oftentimes onions and just that allium family are left out. And that's a really wonderful way to accent so many of your dishes to add some onions to it, add some garlic to it. And you're able to get um, a lot of those nutrient benefits from there. And so really high in their cardiovascular properties. They help kind of lower blood pressure, help lower your clotting abilities. So you're kind of less prone to get any blood clots. They help lower your blood glucose. Um, and they've been long studies. <laughs> I think just to absorb kind of once they're in your body because of their little cells, they kind of help out with just moving everything through. So kind of as a fiber would act when you do eat them raw. Yeah. And if any of you are interested in like um, plant history and then also like different um, types and varietals, I got this book forever ago. <laughs> it's called um, Vegetable Literacy. And it's really neat because they walk you through like a bunch of different varieties, even like wild varietals. And they talk about flavor profiles. Um, I think when I first learned about carrots naturally actually being purple and then they were genetically modified to be orange and that's how we got to where we are now. Yeah, it's like um, the center portion to it. Yeah. Huh. And then we did get a question. So great question. How do you take away the onion smell from your hands? Um, let's see, typically what we'll do is kind of scrub, well, I'll do it with a lemon. Like if you've got mm -hmm. half of a lemon, just kind of scrub all the way around with that to help kind of pull that smell from it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anything you would do in particular. I mean, you could do a vinegar, like mm -hmm. rinse kind of like a lot of people do apple cider vinegar um, to get rid of stuff, smells and things, but I would probably do the same. I would just do almost like a, like a sugar scrub even and do like yeah. the lemon and the sugar and kind of like rub those together with like some oil and that'll like remove the natural yeah, oil scrubs it away which is also really nice if you do like if you're outside and you just get deep dirt in your fingers from gardening all mm -hmm. of that helps pull out the dirt from the oils um, that you've got in your fingerprints are spring onions different than green onions or scallions so um scallions and green onions are the same thing mm -hmm. um but spring onions are actually like your white onions that are just harvested in the spring versus letting them go full season and develop that bulb. So lack of a better way to put it, but using the tools that we have, it kind of just looks like that. And so it'd be like the cipollini with the long spring top to it. Mm -hmm. And it's very small and bulbous too. Um, they're also very mild. So usually when you get them really yeah. mild and very easy to eat raw, 
which is not common with onions because of their astringency to it. Yeah. Um, so you get less of a yield yeah. since you're kind of cutting off the lifespan of it. And so then you get there. like leeks fall into that same family with the mm -hmm. alliums, ramps. Uh, I know yeah. kind of difficult to find in certain areas. And with the ramps, it's just that wild leak to it. So it grows in the dirt like any other onion would. But those, you get a lot of flavor out of the tops. And with the bottoms, you kind of want to leave them around. And so, yeah, I know you can go ramp hunting when you're out here and in certain parts of um, kind of the more marshy areas. It's a really nice way to forage for what you've got available. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, really great grows like a weed in your backyard. Same thing with chives. I know I was telling Katie for the longest time, my parents had chives in the backyard and I just thought they were like dandelions. And I didn't realize until I was maybe 18 that that was an herb that you can eat it and use it for stuff. Yeah, we have, yeah. we have random wild chive patches like all throughout my yard. And then it looks like we had a common that green onions and coffee grounds help get that smell of the onions out too. Oh so yeah, yeah, that's true. I will use coffee grounds and like lemon or like oh, yeah, onion, yeah. like the oil. Mm -hmm. Makes a nice exfoliant as well. Feels good. <laughs> all right, so we've got our lovely pizza. This part is the fresh mozzarella. This part has the herby goat cheese. We're just gonna take this and just spread this out on here. Here we go. Got those beautiful colors all the way around. That's a nice, kind of nice way to just add more greens to your meals without doing a salad directly on top or eating a salad on the side. Yes, it's a wonderful way to kind of add a whole serving of veggies to your pizza also. Yeah, and if you're trying to make this completely plant-based and you would just leave the um, cheese off, you can um, get like cashew cheese varietals as well. Um, you can also kind of make a pickled version of like tofu to kind of make almost like a tofu feta which would be a nice little like sprinkling on top. And that one's really similar uh, to that goat cheese. Because so if you do have, you know, issues with cheese or maybe you're just trying to cut back a little bit because you find that you eat it a lot, there's a really great alternative to make that um, a little more variety into your diet and mm -hmm. possibly a little more balanced or kind of heart healthy, depending on what you kind of need to get your balance out of. But yeah. All right, so here we are. Flatbread. Anybody got any other questions? And we'll just go ahead and chop into this and kind of break it up into little pieces. Yeah, and then with that flatbread, I don't recall if we mentioned kind of how we picked it up, but you can find these pre-made just at the deli section of the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they're herb flatbreads, sometimes they're just as they are, but they come, uh, they go ahead and they freeze really well. Yes. And so if you've got that for the future, that's a great way to kind of utilize your resources. Yeah, thank you, Hank. Um, Stephanie and Jim are going to be oh, yeah. live tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, chef, uh, guest chefs on, um, what is it? It's a specialty. Facebook Live. Yes, it's Specialty Gases Facebook Live. Thanks, Hank. I completely forgot to get the link from Jim. <laughs> Just post it on there to let you all know. Yeah, we can post mm -hmm. it in the um, little chat here. We will. We'll post Real it in quick. the comments. And we're doing grilled things tomorrow. So we've got grilled chicken, grilled shrimp, grilled veggies, some grilled peach dessert or whatever I can find at the grocery store that we can toss on the grill. So that'll be a fun one. Yeah, but it supports our initiative and all the donations that um, anybody puts in will go back to um, the James, right? Mm -hmm. Back to the James Fund. Um, and so that just kind of helps with our virtual outreach that we've leaned into a year. So we do do our Ross Garden. We also do some um, kind of some different platforms with different economic statuses that we're looking to get into, which we normally would do when we take the truck out into the community. But since we're not able to gather right now, we're trying to meet people as always, just where they are and with what they've got available. So yeah, thanks so much, Hank. We'll go ahead and send that email out. Um, I'll see this afternoon. Yeah, once yeah, we get it. We can, if not, but not tonight, but this morning, and we'll, you know, we'll get you with all the recipes and everything from there. Um, but yeah, so we've got this flatbread pizza. It looks really delicious. We'll go ahead. Thanks, Katie, and grab mm -hmm. those pickled onions. And then you can see right on top here with these really thin ones that uh, that color is already coming out of them. And so we'll grab this guy right there. I was checking him out earlier. And so you can start to see, like, it's losing that red on the outside. And these are very thin, but it's starting to become pink. And so the longer that they sit in there, the more pink they will become because those color that anthocyanin will get pulled out of it and just settle into the water. But they're also, you know, very pliable. Mm -hmm. And you see Katie just pop that right in her mouth. They're ready to go from there. And so I've got a nice acidity from the apple cider vinegar. 
they'd be really lovely out to add right over the top. Um, just be an onion pizza. Yeah, <laughs> we were talking about it before. They're nice for tacos. They're great for chicken, um, especially kind of like if you got a baked fried chicken going, that would be a really nice way to add some acidity to it and some flavor back while still keeping it a little bit lighter and heart healthy and sneaking a vegetable in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that kind of covers all of our onion and garlic topics tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions, keep fielding them our way. And then, yeah, Jim and I would love to see you tomorrow. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's all been a while since you've seen Jim, but he is still Jim and he's excited. <laughs> you know? We'll get him behind the grill and hopefully he doesn't light that table on fire. <laughs> yeah, we can plant the, plant the crowd for him to ask exactly. him some questions. Yes. We're gonna leave them up and shut Jim ready to go. I know he misses you all. We're going to get him back in here soon again. But yeah, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next week. Thank you guys.